The U.S.-China chip war has escalated. On Sunday, May 21st, China's cybersecurity regulator announced that Micron, the biggest U.S. memory chip maker, had failed its network security review and that it would block operators of key infrastructure from buying from the company. The move is seen as a counterattack by the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, against a series of American export controls, while at the same time alienating U.S. allies and winning over South Korea. I'm going to get the day right. Happy Tuesday. So, look, the, the recent announcement by the PRC regarding Micron, we believe, are, are not, base, uh, not based in fact. And so the Department of Commerce is engaged directly with the PRC to detail our views on this. Uh, we are tr we're certainly troubled by the action and the recent raids and targeting of uh, American, uh, American firms, American companies. Uh, these actions are inconsistent with the PRC's uh, assertions that it is uh, opening its markets and committed to a transparent regulatory uh, framework. Uh, so those conversations are certainly, of our views, are certainly being communicated uh, to the PRC via the Department of Commerce. Okay, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. The cybersecurity review carried out by China's relevant departments on Micron's products is in accordance with the law. Decisions are made based on facts. The United States has listed more than 1,200 Chinese companies and individuals onto all kinds of lists and imposed restrictions under the pretext of national security without any factual basis. This, as a matter of fact, is economic coercion. This is unacceptable. So, will the escalating chip war affect Micron, or is the CCP going to face more serious consequences than expected? In this episode, we explore this topic. First, let's briefly review Beijing's allegations against Micron. Regarding the cybersecurity review of Micron's products sold in China, I have just described the situation, and the competent Chinese authorities have also released the news. I would like to emphasize that China is a country governed by the rule of law, and any enterprise should operate legally in China and the judicial authorities will also investigate any suspected violations in accordance with the law. Although the Cyberspace Administration of China, or CAC, said Micron's products have serious network security risks, it didn't provide details on what risks it found or what products from the company would be affected. As we mentioned earlier, the White House press secretary denied the allegations from the CCP. Meanwhile, a spokesperson from the U.S. Commerce Department responded, We firmly oppose restrictions that have no basis in fact. This action, along with recent raids and targeting of other American firms, is inconsistent with China's assertions that it is opening its markets and committed to a transparent regulatory framework. The U.S. Commerce Department said it would speak directly with authorities in Beijing to clarify their actions. We also will engage with key allies and partners to ensure we are closely coordinated to address distortions of the memory chip market caused by China's actions. Micron said it had received the regulator's review and looked forward to continuing to engage in discussions with Chinese authorities. Micron had previously insisted on the safety of its products and its commitment to customers. Micron is the first U.S. chipmaker to be targeted by Beijing after a series of export controls by Washington on certain American components and chipmaking tools to block them from being used to advance China's military capabilities. On May 22, Mark Murphy, Micron's chief financial officer, said that according to the company's current assessment, the impact of China's ban on Micron's total revenue would only be in the single digits. Analysts at Jefferies, an American multinational independent investment bank, expected a limited impact on Micron as its major customers in China are consumer electronics firms such as smartphone and computer manufacturers, not infrastructure suppliers. Micron derives around 10% of its revenue from China. It generated 5.2 billion of revenue from China and Hong Kong last year, about 16% of its total revenue. The larger chunk of Micron's products flowing into China is being purchased by non-Chinese firms for use in products manufactured there. Jeffrey's analyst noted, 
Since Micron's DRAM and NAND products are much less in servers, we believe most of its revenue in China is not generated from telcos and the government. Therefore, the ultimate impact on Micron will be quite limited. Bernstein, a global asset management firm, said a 2% sales decline is the most realistic estimate, considering Micron's relatively small presence in the enterprise and cloud server space. We believe that this move by Beijing is short-sighted. It'll serve little use in cracking down on Micron. Instead, it will lead to significant consequences for itself. Beijing's ban may benefit Micron's main competitors, Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix in South Korea, or China's own chip makers in the short term. Micron is one of the three largest players in the global DRAM market, along with Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix. Now Beijing is trying to ensure the survival of its semiconductor industry. Communist-backed Yangtze Memory Technologies, YMTC, has made some inroads in the NAND sector, which could make it a competitor to leaders like Samsung, Kioxia Holdings Corporation, and Micron. China's Changshin Memory Technologies, CXMT, has also received support from the Chinese Communist government and is developing in the DRAM sector. However, for both YMTC and CXMT, memory chips are a commodity that requires a huge advantage in terms of manufacturing capabilities and technical skills, which allows industry leaders to stay ahead of the curve. U.S. allies such as Japan and the Netherlands have agreed to stop supplying chip manufacturing technology to China, putting Chinese companies such as YMTC and CXMT further behind in their ability to provide world-leading chips. The suppression of foreign products on the grounds of national security is a well-worn excuse for the CCP. This move against Micron is a way for the government to make it seem as if the Chinese government is powerful and dignified to a population that doesn't have freedom of information. That is, the CCP might have served some purposes in stirring up national sentiment and stabilizing the rule. However, if the CCP strictly enforces this requirement and insists that critical infrastructure can only be served by Chinese suppliers, the result will be to force local Chinese network and server companies to deploy subpar components, thus weakening their own capabilities. More realistically, the gap vacated by Micron will be filled by another supplier, and the replacement is more likely to be suppliers from South Korea or Japan, rather than Chinese suppliers. The Communist Party's announcement to ban Micron came just as the G7 summit in Hiroshima, Japan was closing. This is likely a way for the CCP to put the US-led coalition against it to the test, with South Korea believed to be the CCP's main target to win over. Due to Japan's clear stance in recent years, the CCP has long lost the motivation to draw it in and instead considered it as a second enemy after the US. On May 18, 2023, before the G7 summit, the Japanese government invited Micron, Intel, Samsung, TSMC, and other major semiconductor manufacturers to expand their investments in Japan. Micron said it plans to invest up to 500 billion yen, or US 3.7 billion, to become the first chipmaker to bring advanced chip manufacturing technology to Japan. Japan is trying to revive its chip industry, while the U.S. is increasingly urging its allies to work together against developments in chip and advanced technology by the CCP to contain its military advances. In a joint statement following the G7 summit, the U.S. and its allies specifically criticized the CCP's economic coercion of other countries and regions. Japan, as the host, was instrumental in advancing the meeting's agenda. Angered, the CCP protested against Japan. On May 21st, Vice Foreign Minister Sun Weidong summoned Japanese ambassador to China and made solemn representations to the Group of Seven Hiroshima Summit on hypering up China-related issues. As for Japan's defense, China has refuted on the spot and pointed out it was the United States and Japan that have taken the lead to position China as the biggest strategic challenge. They have been pointing fingers at China, interfering in China's internal affairs on various occasions, and vigorously engaged in blocking and containing China. They should be the ones that should correct their evils. 
On May 23rd, the second day after the CCP crackdown on Micron, Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry introduced new chip export control measures, adding 23 categories including advanced chip manufacturing equipment to the list of controlled targets. The 23 new items will require individual permits unless they are shipped to the 42 designated friendly countries and regions. The broad export restrictions will take effect on July 23, 2023, and have China's semiconductor industry concerned that its production of lower-grade chips will also be affected. On the same day, China's Ministry of Commerce expressed strong opposition to Japan's new export control measures, saying that China has the right to take measures to safeguard its legitimate rights and interests. VLSI research data show that in the global semiconductor manufacturing equipment market, about 30% of the equipment is from Japanese companies. The Financial Times reported on May 23rd that Chinese industry executives who have studied the details of the planned regulations said Japan's export restrictions might have gone further than the U.S. in limiting China's ability to manufacture semiconductors. For the chip manufacturing industry, 28 nanometers is usually the dividing line between mature and advanced processes. 28 nanometer and above processes are called mature processes. The process below 28 nanometers is called the advanced process. The most advanced chips for smartphones, for example, are 3 nanometers, while more mature chips for home appliances, cars, and Internet of Things gadgets are produced at 28 nanometers and above. Mature chips cover a wide range of fields. Chips at 28 nanometers and above are expected to account for 75 to 80 percent of global foundry capacity within the next three years, according to research firm TrendForce. Previously, the U.S. has severely restricted exports to China of advanced semiconductor manufacturing equipment for supercomputers and artificial intelligence, and has asked Japan and the Netherlands to take similar measures. A report in the Financial Times pointed out that the equipment controlled by the U.S. in October 2022 involved 14 and 16 nanometers or more sophisticated processes, while Japan's regulations covered the more basic 45 nanometer process for immersion lithography devices. In other words, Japan's chip ban may cause China's production of lower-end chips for cars, washing machines, etc. to be affected. Previously, in March 2023, the Japanese government announced the revision of the foreign exchange and foreign trade law and planned to expand the scope of export control of semiconductor manufacturing equipment. The China Semiconductor Industry Association, which represents 900 companies, protested, Chinese media reported at the time, while also warning that Japan's possible restrictions on exporting equipment were too wide and could affect the supply chain for more mature chip technology. Facing the U.S. ban, the key response adopted by the CCP is to concentrate its efforts on the production of mature chips, that is, 28 nanometers and above, with mature technology, and once hoped to turn Japan and South Korea to replace U.S. technology. SMIC, China's largest chipmaker, has ramped up production of lower-grade chips after being added to the U.S. export control entity list, with four new plants under construction. It seems that because of Japan's new regulations, the alternative route designed by the CCP will also face huge obstacles. The Financial Times quoted a Chinese official who has close contacts with chip manufacturers as saying that Dutch semiconductor company ASML will only have to deal with restrictions of advanced chip manufacturing equipment, but Japanese companies are subject to broader controls. An ASML-related person said, what the Japanese government means is that they will require all products to be licensed, and whether the license will be approved is a question. The Japanese have gone further than us. We see that in the field of chips, the CCP hasn't taken into account its own weakness, but has maintained its war-wolf posture, choosing to confront the U.S. in a tit-for-tat manner. This posture has instead provoked Japan to quickly join the battleground of the U.S.-China chip war. So will the CCP be able to woo South Korea and drive a wedge between it and the U.S. and their allies? For example, the Beijing government could give the memory chip market vacated by Micron to South Korea's Samsung or SK Hynix to draw it in. South Korean companies have long been potential targets for the CCP because of their high dependence on the Chinese market. The U.S., Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan have been planning a chip-for alliance since March 2022. 
If the Chip4 alliance is fully implemented together with the US-Japan-Dutch trilateral agreement, the CCP will be completely excluded from the global supply chain of advanced chips. Therefore, it is crucial for Beijing to gain the support of the South Korean government and businesses. According to a May 23rd report in the Financial Times, the White House has asked the South Korean government to urge South Korean chip makers not to fill any gaps in the Chinese chip market in response to the CCP's ban on Micron. Pressure is also being exerted by various sectors in the U.S. On May 23rd, House Select Committee on China Chairman Mike Gallagher said in a statement that the U.S. must make clear that it won't tolerate economic coercion by the Chinese Communist Party against U.S. companies or U.S. allies. The Commerce Department should immediately add China's CXMT to its list of institutional sanctions and ensure that U.S. technology, regardless of specifications, doesn't flow to CXMT, YMTC, or other Chinese companies operating in the industry. CXMT, a leading Chinese manufacturer of DRAM memory wafers, is considered the Chinese domestic competitor most likely to benefit from Micron's ban. Another Chinese supplier of flash memory wafers, YMTC, has already been added to the list of entities sanctioned by the U.S. Department of Commerce in December 2022. Gallagher also said the Commerce Department must ensure that equipment export licenses acquired by foreign semiconductor memory companies should not be used to backfill the Chinese market share vacated by Micron sanctions. He wrote, and our South Korean ally, which has experienced first-hand economic coercion from the Chinese Communist Party in recent years, should take the same action to prevent backfill. In fact, despite the huge temptation of the Chinese market, it will be quite difficult for South Korean companies involved. The U.S. announced an export control order on advanced wafers and semiconductor equipment to China in October 2022. South Korea's Samsung and SK Hynix factories in China were granted a one-year exemption from the equipment export ban. However, the license will need to be extended by the U.S. when it expires. South Korean officials have so far not made any explicit statement, indicating that they were divided internally. The new South Korean president was invited to attend the G7 summit in May for the first time since he took office in 2022, and he has shown a greater tendency to lean on Western allies than the previous administrations. It is still hard to say whether the CCP will finally get its way. We believe that it's difficult for South Korean companies to upgrade their technology in China due to the U.S. ban on semiconductor equipment, and they are also facing technology theft and competition from Chinese manufacturers. The best way for South Korean companies would be to leave the Chinese market. Otherwise, they face a limited market with a lot of competition and discriminatory policies. Eventually, it would gradually shrink anyway. A final consequence of the Micron case is that it will further intimidate multinational companies. A senior member of the U.S. House Select Committee on Communism told Bloomberg, Every U.S. company should ask, is it better to invest in China now? The Communist Party is making it more difficult to do business every day. The Communist Party's actions are making it easier and easier for U.S. companies to make choices, and we in Congress need to make it easier for them to go back home and reinvest in the U.S., he said. Recently, China passed an anti-espionage law in vague terms that has caused great anxiety for foreign companies operating in China. For example, the Chinese government has refused to explain its recent raids on two consulting firms, Bain & Company and Capvision, as well as due diligence firm Mintz Group. The Micron case is just a small droplet in the torrent of Sino-U.S. relations and confrontation. What appears to be a game between two major powers uniting their respective allies is in fact a clash of two different sets of values. The overall trend is that in the US-China confrontation, the CCP has fewer and fewer friends and more and more opponents. Every move made by the CCP seems to make its own situation worse.